Do you remember Dead Rising? Kinda. I've covered wars, you know. Released August 8th, 2006, Dead Rising is one of the Xbox 360's most iconic games. On its release, it was renowned as one of the first games of the next generation, being able to render up to 800 zombies on screen at once. This is a series called Nostalgia Drive where I try to go back and 100% the games I couldn't when I was a kid. I'm only missing 9 of Dead Rising's achievements, including the hardest one, 7 Day Survivor. I have to admit, I really underestimated how hard this game would be. The achievements I needed were Tour Guide and Frank the Pimp, which can be done at the same time, Psycho Collector and PP Collector, Unbreakable and Transmissionary, The Secret Achievement Snuffshot B, and finally 5 Day and 7 Day Survivor, the mother of all achievements. First, I need a strategy. I don't have my old save file anymore, so that means I'm level 1 and I no longer have the real Mega Man Blaster. Some of these achievements can't be done in the same playthrough, like Unbreakable and PP Collector, so I decided to break up the achievements into two playthroughs. My first playthrough would be an Unbreakable run, where I have to beat the game without getting knocked out by the cultists or the military. During this run, I would also try to get any other achievements I could. Being a low level in this game is horrible. Frank runs like a damn goblin. The first obstacle I had to overcome was Carlito. That's because whenever you use a gun in this game, Frank aims the gun in the direction he was facing, not the direction the camera was facing. This is incredibly disorienting. It can be changed in the settings, but at this point, I didn't know that. Great start. This is going to be a long video. After the Carlito fight, I waited until it was time to fight Adam, the clown psychopath, which unlocks a shortcut between Paradise Plaza and Wonderland Plaza. Everyone used to laugh at me. Once he was dead, I saved Greg and he led me to the shortcut, something crucial for the achievement Frank the Pimp. But along the way, he kept stopping to fight zombies and got himself killed. One rage quit and another try later, I had the shortcut. From there I just played the game until it was time to go for my first two achievements. Poor guy is unlocked by having 8 survivors following you, the maximum you can have. And Frank the Pimp is unlocked by having 8 survivors that are all women. If you don't have tour guide, then getting Frank the Pimp will get you both. The tricky part about these two is that there can only ever be 8 survivors on the map. This means any quest that would put you over the limit won't even appear. The easiest way to get these achievements is to kill any male survivors and any female survivors that are too difficult to escort. The first two that we're getting spawn in Paradise Plaza, just outside of the toy store. The next five spawn in Wonderland Plaza. One of them is with a guy I need to kill to free up the 8th survivor spot. But that was my first problem, getting those two to spawn. No matter how many times I reloaded the zone, they wouldn't come in. That meant there was one survivor on the map that I needed to find and get rid of for the achievement. Luckily his laugh gave him away. With Kent on the map, there were currently 7 survivors in the mall. This prevented the two in Wonderland Plaza from spawning. After I dealt with him, all I had to do was save Sally and kill Nick. Then stop Joe and get her four hostages. I don't know why, but these seven survivors seem to be pretty bad with directions. Once we were finally back in Paradise Plaza, all I had to do was save Jennifer, and that's two achievements done. After reloading a save to give myself a little more time, I pressed onward towards the true ending. I kept saving as many survivors as I could, just so I could get my level up. Getting a headshot from here's no big deal, Jack. Is that guy Steve Bloom? Then it was time for the secret achievement, Snuffshot B. This is Brad. Brad is cool. Brad dies. 
Say cheese, Brad. Along the way, one of my friends told me how strong the small chainsaw is, and I gotta say, he isn't wrong. With the three related books, it can kill over 2,000 zombies before it breaks. But it will eventually break, trust me. Once the main story was over and the military came into the mall, it was time to wait until morning. Now I was in overtime mode, a direct progression towards the true ending. I had a few close calls, but eventually I was at the final fight. The tank was a lot easier than I remembered. But the fight with Brock, the final psychopath, was not. I didn't expect to have this much trouble in this fight. Shout out to the Dead Rising Wiki, it has a bunch of tips on how to fight Brock. With useful strategies such as, attack his right side. And, just jump kick him bro. Let's not forget the most useful one, try to avoid being hit off the tank. Fantastic advice. All it took was one lucky hit and I was up 20G. I knew it! Now it was time for the transmissionary run. For this, you need to answer every possible call from Otis and see all of the dialogue that he has. This is also a perfect time to get Psycho Collector, by photographing at least 10 of the game's 12 psychopaths. Transmissionary was a lot more complicated than I thought. Some of the survivors need to be rescued to trigger certain quests later. Another roadblock is the survivor limit. If I just ignored the quests, then the survivors on the map would eventually start to pile up. That means I have to be a psychopath myself if I want to do this achievement. Wait. I have to admit it, this is really the only achievement I had to use a guide on. There's no other way to do this without memorizing the entire game. But it did feel a little weird murdering some people. It especially felt bad to kill the only two Japanese characters. I also realized while editing this that I did it with a katana. Yikes. But my next quest was going to be my hardest. A strange group. In this quest, I have to defeat Sean, the leader of the True Eye cult. I'm free to kill his four captives, but the one I have to rescue is Cheryl, who's locked in this closet. That's because she has a quest later. And I had to get her to the security room before I ran out of time to accept the next story mission, Santa Cabeza. But then the worst thing that could have happened, happened. You've got to be kidding me. Where am I? With seconds to spare, I barely managed to save my run. After I geared back up, I found Paul and got his picture, which finished Psycho Collector. Then at 8pm on the 21st, it was time for me to get my last call from Otis. No. I got it! That was the longest five seconds of my life. Next was PP Collector, and then all that would be left is 7 Day Survivor. This is a fairly easy achievement where I just need to find all 100 PP stickers hidden around the map, and take their picture. The worst thing that can happen here is missing one, because I'd have no way of knowing which one I'd miss. But what are the odds of that? What should be the achievement? Fantastic! Uh-oh. 
Uh oh. <laughs> After I finally found the missing sticker, it was time for the final boss. Five day and seven day survivor. These achievements are unlocked in the infinity mode. By playing 10 hours straight for five day survivor and a total of 14 hours straight for seven day survivor. With every 24 in game hours being two hours in real time. In this mode, Frank slowly loses health over time, receiving one damage each time this bar is depleted. It takes exactly 20 minutes to go from full health to dead. You also can't save, so one mistake and you have to start all over. This makes food crucial, but in this mode, it doesn't even respawn. Even if you picked up all the food in the game, it isn't possible to live long enough to get the achievements. This is where the psychopaths and survivors come in. Both of them are hostile in infinity mode, and they carry additional food that you'll need if you want to live long enough to get the achievements. While I am going in without a guide, I'm not going in completely blind. I already know where the health books are. Having all three of these triple the amount of health that food heals for. I also already knew that three psychopaths spawn in the park at the start of infinity mode. This gives us a huge start. The food that they drop is fresh food, meaning that it can expire if you leave it in your inventory, so I had to leave it on the ground and wait until I needed to use it. With all the food that they drop, you can easily get by in the park for 20 in-game hours. From there, I went off to Wonderland Plaza to look for the small chainsaw. Luckily, the clown was right in front of me at the entrance. It took a bit, but once I finally beat him, I had the weapon that I was going to use for the rest of the 12 hours. At least that's what I thought, but I'll get to that later. Huge thanks to Lilith who warned me that some zones can crash your Xbox on certain days, something I had no idea about since I wasn't using a guide. For now though, I spent another 12 in-game hours in the food court. This put me at about 3 hours total into the run. Then it was just a matter of waiting and eating whenever I needed to. Playing safely was key, so I wouldn't lose too much health. I killed enemies whenever I found them, or whenever they found me. Oh shit, what the fuck? Whenever I had too much food to carry, I would just wait until my health was low enough to use it. Mostly because I was afraid I'd forget where it was. Psychopaths were always a good thing to see. Even if I took a lot of damage, the amount of food they dropped for me always made the fight worth it. I also made sure to take breaks in safer areas to stretch my legs and stay hydrated. I even had my friends coming in and out of my stream to keep me company. You know what I'm gonna do, Jacob? What? I'm gonna join your stream while I sleep and mute my mic. Okay. Okay. Alright, now I'm going to bed. Good night. Um. What? I'm gonna put on weird shit and then bounce it through my OBS so that way Keith listens to it while he's watching my stream. Okay. Ooh, 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 the Communist Manifesto. Manifesto of the Communist Party by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. I have a lot of footage of me just waiting for time to pass. This achievement takes extreme patience. I didn't want to take any unnecessary risks, but I was also too worried to just walk away from my Xbox and do something else. With my huge stockpile of food that I had from just exploring the mall, all I had to do was play the waiting game. After hours of playing it safe, I had finally gotten 5 Day Survivor. This put me at exactly 10 hours into my run. It also means I unlocked the Laser Sword, the strongest weapon in the game, and it was ready and waiting for me in the security room right now. I wasn't planning on using it, but I was using my small chainsaw too much, so it was ready to break any minute. Out of options, I decided to run for the security room. Little did I know, that would be the worst decision I could have made. Kent is the most dangerous psychopath I could have met here. His attack animations are really fast, 
and they happen often enough to stop me from healing. Or worse, stun lock me altogether. It was a hard fight without weapons, but after using most of my food, I managed to gain the upper hand. I only had one health item left, but surely whatever he would drop would at least partially cover the resources I lost fighting him. So apparently if a zombie gets the final hit on a psychopath, then he won't drop anything at all. Fuck. With still over three and a half hours to go before I got the final achievement, I was now desperate for food. Getting the laser sword helped, but even still it wasn't looking good. I had already used all of the food I could find around the mall, so unless I found more psychopaths, I'd have to start all over. That was when I heard the voice of God himself. Bang. I didn't even know that psychopaths could respawn, not to mention that they'd be in different areas from before. After I finally finished them off, I had almost 20 more hours worth of food, food that I immediately ran to the safest store I could find. Then I immediately ran into the other safest store I could find. After waiting through all of day 5, it was time to hunt for more food. At this point, I was just under 24 in-game hours away from my goal. That meant I'd be done in less than 2 hours out of game. I left to look for more food, but I didn't have to look long. Of the Communist Party by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. A specter is haunting Europe, a specter of communism. All the powers of old Europe have entered into a holy alliance to exercise this specter. Adam. Adam's the clown. Adam's a psychopath. Oh shit. Adam drops pizza and a smoothie, both of which fully heal you. Assuming I didn't get hit, this was enough food to get me to 8am. With the food I already had, I was looking at just enough to get me to finish the game. All I had to do was keep my eye on the clock. Position that is not hurled back the branding reproach of communism. It may have taken 14 hours this sitting, but this achievement was 15 years in the making for me. While I was waiting, I took a look back on my channel, and some of the videos that I had been making recently. The reason I had never tried to get this achievement was the same reason I was so hesitant to do these kind of videos in the first place. I always thought it'd be a waste of time because it'd be too hard. But after making these videos, and after trying the achievement, I realized it wasn't as impossible as I thought. The real waste of time was just not trying. But it's finally time to say goodbye to Dead Rising. With 30 minutes in game left, I went out to the rooftop for a final look over the Willamette Parkview Mall. Waiting out there for me was Zombie Jesse. And there you have it. I decided I'd let Jesse get the last kill. My reward? A pair of boxers that kind of make me uncomfortable. Dead Rising is still a fascinating and amazing game to this day. While the series did go down an unfortunate path, it doesn't ruin the solid gameplay that the original has. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stray Dog, and if you watch this on TikTok, then stop telling me to hack the achievements, you fucking morons. It defeats the person.